Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Sandwich of Coherency. So, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. You know, we talk a lot about California and how that is a failing state. If you were looking for a picture of what not to do, and that would probably be your poster child. I mean, let's, let's go ahead and just think about this. Just over the past couple years, you've had juvenile detention facilities getting busted for giving young men estrogen shots under the guise that, well, since women have less, est- have less testosterone, and our air quotes, quote unquote, you know, um, genuinely more docile. Maybe if we gave young boys estrogen and alter their chemical makeup, it would make them less aggressive, as they put it. They did this without the parents' knowledge, and it was done under the guise of if you do this, we'll, we'll cut your sentence. Now, the test was just absolute garbage. It didn't do anything at all except give the boy a pair of breasts. I think B cups is what they said there was or something like that. And that's how his parents found him. He went in without breast and he came out with breast. You've got California and its failed crime policies. You've got this state that's just wasteful with the money. They've got a new scheme for a single ta- single payer tax plan. I mean, well, single payer health care plan they have for the state, which looks to essentially double the taxes of almost everybody in the state. You have people fleeing the state in such droves that at one point in 2021, U-Haul reported there were no more U-Hauls in the truck because, I mean, in the state, what am I, in the truck? They had no more U-Haul trucks left in the state as they were all used to flee the state. You've got California putting in place, attempting to put in place a a tax bill that if you leave California on a declining scale, you will be paying California state taxes for up to 10 years after leaving the state. We're talking about a state that tried to pass a bill that they openly stated would bring to bring back discrimination. A black woman put it forth and in her own words, what she stated was, well, We need to bring back discrimination so we can discriminate on behalf of the people that we want to get ahead. People we claim are disenfranchised for whatever reasons. You're talking about a state that in the university system has people that are from places like Mali, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, many other places in Africa. That are listed as white. Uh, people from Asia. I mean, listed as white. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, these are just very, very incredible things. And it just absolutely blows my mind. That somehow this state is still operational. They've got a whole lot of words and things to say about how the rest of the nation should work and operate. They brag and boast about how much money that the, that they, that their taxes do to 
go to the rest of the nation. You know, how much the rest of the nation depends on California and the money we make. And that's a lot of bold statement coming from a place that has one of the worst homeless problems in the entire nation. Maybe they should get their house in order. I don't know. Try doing something about your homeless population. It's a lot of big speak from a state that has some of the worst rampant crime when you have gang members telling people don't come to the state, when you have the police, come to Los Angeles rather, when you have the police telling people don't come to Los Angeles, when you have people fleeing out of the place like rats on a sinking ship. It's a lot of big talk to try and tell the entire rest of the United States what they are doing wrong. I mean, take Eric Swalwell. He didn't stay in California, did he? No, not for his holiday. He went to Florida. He went over 2,000 miles away. I thought California had sunny beaches. You've got the PCH. The Pacific Coast Highway is beautiful. Why would you leave for a place that doesn't agree with your values? Hmm, makes you wonder. But in a new thing, California has a new bill. And that they're proposing, which will allow children ages 12 and older to be vaccinated without the parents' consent or knowledge. So understand this. They don't even have to tell. They don't even want to tell the parents anymore. Now, if passed, the legislation would ensure California has the youngest age of any state when children can make their own decisions about vaccines. Washington, D.C., now they, re- they recently passed that one, if you remember, allows children ages 11 and older to be vaccinated without approval from the parents. Now, it was put forth by Scott Weiner. I can't believe that this guy is still in office. I mean, damn. Anyways, it allowed minors 12 and older to consent to vaccines that would have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And we got to take into account, let's think about this. They don't have your child's medical information, which means that in order for this to work, your child will have to give them consent to their medical records and information without your prior knowledge as a parent because it defeats the whole purpose of their scheme if they have to come to the parents to get permission to get the child's medical records to know if there would be any complications by administering anything to your child. And, you know, I, I talked about this last year in 2021 and, you know, I got a lot of people thought I was going overboard with it. But like I said, it starts with the first step. It's going to start with the step of them man saying that your child can get the vaccines without your permission. That's how it will begin. And it will go, can, can, it will go into other steps. What comes next? Oh, well, we find that there's a lot of aggression in schools. The FDA. And the CDC have found that low doses of mood stabilizers, Prozac and such, are able to help children function and lower aggression. Why would that not be the next step? It can improve grades. It can lower violence. You've got Democrats out there who say, we, we, they, that they back the idea of 
jail time and separating from society and segregating people that question the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines. They back the idea of forced vaccinations. If they back such ideas, why would they not stand behind an idea of forcing all children in schools to take some kind of mood drugs? But again, this is, this is goes even further beyond that, in my opinion, because again, this is giving them access to your child's personal records without you. You know, it, it, it's what ex- this, this becomes a very scary idea because it's slow, slowly more and more the government taking over the rights of the parent from the parent. I mean, at this rate, it's not too far fetched for them to believe that they, they're saying they know what's best for your child. They know what's best for what goes in in your house. And if you don't do inside of your home what the government tells you to do inside of your home, we will take said child from you because the government knows best. I was giving away all those, these ideas, you know, people said, it's a slippery slope. Don't go giving away your freedoms just because they're telling you it's good for you. It's never good for you. And, and, you know, they said it from the beginning. When has a government ever given rights back that they've tried to take from you? They can't take them unless you give them away. And they didn't give up anything in this pandemic and as we this thing is still it's dwindling down let's look at it that way and they're trying to kick it back up you got dr fauci saying that there's five phases to it and we're still in the first phase what motherfucker what bro look he's been caught and he refuses to give it up But the fact of the matter is, is that they've not done anything to relinquish any of the authorities that they've given themselves, but have done more and more to extend them and give themselves even more. You've got governors across the United States, Democratic governors, of course, writing bills and laws to extend the authority to them indefinitely, pretty much giving themselves the right to decide when it's over, you know, superseding the advice of medical professionals. If those medical professionals don't agree with what they want. I mean, but I'm I'm not trying to go too far off on a tangent on this, but I'm just saying, you know, It's kind of, it's a very scary thing that there's more and more bills being passed to overthrow the authority of parents and the rights that parents have in their families and their structures and over their children. It's now, it's it's like they're making it taboo for this idea that parents believe have this idea that their child is their child and nobody that has nothing to do with their child should be allowed to have any decisions on what happens with that child. This is just is becoming absolute nonsense. And I'm very saddened for the state of California for not Removing Gavin Newsom in that recall election. But, you know, we have, again, and I say this every time, we have elections coming up this year. If you're not registered to vote, go register to vote. If you don't have an identification, you have tons of time. You have many, many months 
to sort that out, to be able to get your identification, to be able to go express your voice at the polls and vote. So let's get it together, people, and make some changes later this year. But I thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.